Martin. Modern mansion. Big architectural modern. All right. All right. Sophia, what kind of mansion do you want? What? A three story or four? Or more than that? All right. All right. You see. What kind of mansion do you want in heaven? A big one. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Charlie, what kind of mansion do you want? You already know what it is like. High ceilings and everything. Yeah. Amen. All right. So today we are going to look at the type of mansion we get in heaven. Yes, Lord. So, Jesus is about to die. And he is talking with his disciples and he says, you know, he's encouraging them and telling them things that are going to come and everything. And he says to them, you won't let your hearts be troubled. John chapter 14, verse 1, are you all there? You won't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. So he says, do not let your heart be troubled because he's about to die and he's preparing them. And he says, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. Amen. If that were not so, so other versions say, my father's house has many mansions. If that were not so, I would have told you. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Amen. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Amen. Amen. So he says, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. For in my father's house, he says, my father's house, my father's house. So we have the father's, can you all see? What? What? Oh. It's difficult writing a shake, so. No, I'm serious. That is why I don't listen to this often. I'm so comfortable. So, in the Father's house, okay. So, in the Father's house, watch this. Don't pay attention. Just, just pay attention to this. In the Father's house, uh, in the Father's house, there are many rooms. Amen. So in the Father's house, there are many rooms. And Jesus says, if that were not so, I would have told you. So in my Father's house, there are many rooms. Other versions says, many mansions or many dwelling places. That's what the Amplified says. So in my Father's house, there are many uh, uh, rooms. It has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there, to, I would not have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Amen. 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 So he stopped by saying, do not be troubled. You believe in God and believe in me also. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me also. And then immediately he switches and says, In my father's house, there are many mansions, many homes. If that were not so, I would not have told you that. But I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And you know the place. So, it is a house. But it's got many mansions or many rooms within that one house. Amen. Amen. So, he didn't say, In my father's houses. In my father's house, there are many rooms, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if that were not so, I would not have told you. So, what do you think these many rooms are? What do you think the Father's house is? Heaven. Good. So, the Father's house is heaven. What are the rooms? Yes, Lord. <laughs> These the beautiful mansions, where are they are? Jesus wasn't talking about heaven in this context. 
Yes, Lord. <laughs> Jesus wasn't talking about heaven in this context. Far from it. So far from it. Of course, that's what we've been taught for our whole lives. You know, there are songs about it, everything. Amen. So, we've been told that. I thought they were going to wrap on the cheap furnace today. <laughs> In my father's house, there were many mansions, many rooms. If that's what the Lord have told you, he wasn't talking about heaven. All right. Just listen. Just follow me, okay? And he says, in my father's house, there's many rooms. If that's what not so, what I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So, he says that, in my father's house, there are many rooms, okay? And he says, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the, he says, I'm going to go to the father's house. So, I'm going to go to the father's house, and I'm going to, so, the father's house has many rooms. So, I'm going to go to the father's house, and I'm going to prepare some rooms for you. And when I'm done preparing the rooms, I'll come and take you, and you and I will both go into the rooms in the father's house. Okay, so I'm going to come. So, my father's house, there's many rooms. So, I'm going to prepare a place for you. When I'm done, I'm going to pick you. I'm going to take all of you, and we go into my father's house. And where I am, there you will also be. Meaning, you're going to be with Christ forevermore. Amen. But how are you going to be with Christ in the father's house? But where is this father's house? Where is this father's house? Let's continue reading. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? How can we know the way? So there is a way to the Father's house. There is a way to the Father's house. So we now know that, okay, there is a Father's house and there are many rooms. And Christ is going to take us and we go into the many rooms in the Father's house. But there is a way to the place. And Thomas says that, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way. And the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Amen. From now on, you know him and have seen him. So, Jesus is about to die. And he's speaking with his disciples. He says, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If that were not so, I would not have told you. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then I'll come and take you and we go in there. Now remember, these are people who are not born again. They, they don't have a regenerated spirit. They've not been transformed. They've got no new life. And they cannot dwell with God. So, coming to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> Verse 11. So, the Bible says, because of our sin, we've been alienated from God. Amen. We have no connection to God because of our sins. Now, Christ is going to take us to the Father's house. You know what the Father's house is? Christ is the Father's house. The Father's house is Christ. Of course, there is a place we go be with God in eternity heaven, but that is not what he was talking about here. He started by saying, in John, he says, believe in me. <laughs> he says, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he goes, saying, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If that were not so, I would not have told you. But I'm going into my father's house to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, there you will be. Amen. So, the Father's house is Christ. Where is the Father? In Christ. Let's go on. Uh, I'm not, I haven't said anything that is in scripture. Let's, let's just read. Um, let me read, let me read uh, from verse 5 of John, and then we come back to Hebrews, okay? So, you can keep your finger there. Uh, so, verse 5 of John chapter 14. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the Father is somewhere. 
But in order to get to the Father, you first have to go through me. You understand? Let's, let's keep on reading. Verse 7. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father who lives in me. <laughs> Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing the work. So guess what? I am doing the work. But it is someone who is living in me, who is enabling me to do the work. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself, but I only do what I hear my father say. And I, I, I do what I see my father do, and I, he, I say what I hear my father say. So he said that, don't you know that I am in God, and God is in me? And the works that I do, it is not me doing it, but the father living where? in me. So the father is in Christ. Okay, so Christ is here, and it says, is the Father living? And Thomas is like, show us the Father. Have you been with me this whole while, and you still don't know the Father? Colossians, let's go to Colossians and come back. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 19. Verse 9. Are you there? Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. Are you there? For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Amen. So the Bible says that in Christ Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead lives in him. Okay. So yeah, no, I'm not saying there is no heaven to praise our God. That is not what Jesus is saying in this context. There is, but that is not what he is talking about. Amen. We need to rightly divide the word of God. Amen. So, in my father's house, so he said, the Bible says in Colossians 2, verse 9, that the fullness of God dwells in a body form in Jesus. So, God resides in Jesus. And Jesus said, the things that I do, it is not I who do it, but the Father who lives in me. Amen. Very truly, verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will even do greater than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will and what and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen. So it is the Father living in me. So if Jesus is the house and the Father is living in the house, why can we not go into Jesus? But Jesus said that I have to prepare a place for you first. So this is the house. There is a house, but Jesus said the Father is in the house, and there are rooms. But I have to prepare because you cannot come in there. You cannot come in there. Why? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 11. Are you there? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Are you all there? Yes. Well, if you are there, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say, it's not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and cows, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Amen. So, in the Old Covenant, in the Old Covenant, there was the Temple of God. And then in the Temple of God, it was divided into three sections. So, we have the outer courts, the holy place, and the most holy place. And in the most holy place, there was something known as the Ark of the Covenant. That is in the most holy place, in the third room. And on top of the Ark of the Covenant, there are two cherubims. And in between the cherubims, is called the mercy seat. So, every time something... Uh, the, the Israelites could go see uh, God only once a year because he was too holy. And because of the sin, the holiness of God would destroy them. 
So when they are going into the te- tabernacle, a priest has to go there once every year and make uh, atonement for the sins. And then the next year, he has to come back again. So he goes into the temple and he offers sacrifices with the blood of bulls and goats and cows. And then he camps out until the next year. He goes in there again. So the Bible says Jesus comes and he goes through another tabernacle. But this tabernacle is not made with human hands. But it's a more perfect tabernacle. And he didn't go there with the blood of bulls and cows. But he went there with his own blood. So there is a tabernacle that Jesus has gone in to offer sacrifices for the sins of the people. But he said that it is not the normal tabernacle that the priest used to go through. He says this is another tabernacle. Not made with human hands. And when he went there, he went with his own blood. And unlike the blood of bulls and cows, his blood is able to give us eternal redemption. Because the blood and bulls and cows and goats and everything was able to last for only one year. And then they have to go back in there. And what happened was that because they were conscious of the fact that they're going to go in there, they are conscious of sin. That is what the Bible says. The Bible says the law brought about the consciousness of sin. Amen. So they go in there. But now Jesus goes into this temple, not built by human hands. And when he goes in there, he goes in there once and for all. Amen. And, and, and when he goes in there, it is so interesting what Jesus does. He offers sacrifice for eternal redemption. So we don't have to go in year after year. So if Jesus is the temple, why can't we go into him now? Because God is holy and God is in him and we are not. And we cannot go in there until sacrifice has been offered for us. You understand? No one could go into the most holy place. Watch this. So he, let's, in, in Hebrew, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, hold on. Let's go to John chapter 2 verse 19. John chapter 2 verse 19. Are you following? John chapter 2, verse 19. So, Jesus is speaking, and Jesus says, uh, let's go to verse, verse, verse 14. Uh, no. Okay, verse 17. Let's go to verse 17. His disciples remembered, you know, they were selling in the temple, and he went and he was beating them up. And his disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Verse 18. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it in three days. Verse 20. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. So Jesus is now going there. So that is why when we say Jesus is your all in all, he really is your all in all. So now watch this. His body is the temple. And he is the high priest. And the sacrifice, the animal he's going to sacrifice is himself. So Jesus is the temple. And he has to go into the temple. So there has to be a temple for the high priest to go in with the blood of bulls and goats and cows. But the problem is, Hebrews chapter 9 says that it is not an earthly tabernacle. It is one from heaven. Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So Jesus is the temple. He is the priest and he is the sacrifice. So when you say Jesus is your all in all, he really is. So he goes into the temple because the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So before Jesus goes into the temple, you are a sinner. And light and darkness cannot dwell together. You cannot be with God in the same place because Jesus has not died. So it is Jesus going in there to offer sacrifice for you, then your sins are forgiven. But until then, while Jesus is speaking to them, he hasn't gone into the temple to offer the sins of the people. So you cannot go in there. It has to be the, the high priest who goes in there first to offer the sacrifice for the sins of the people. So Jesus says, I am the temple. I am the temple. I am the house, but God dwells in me. So you have the outer court, you have the 
holy place and the most holy place. And in the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant, that was where God was. God sat on the mercy seat. So God is in the innermost part of the temple. Amen. God is in the innermost part of the temple. So Jesus, when he's offering the sacrifice, who is the temple? Jesus, we just read that in John. Who is the temple? Jesus is the temple. Where is God seated in the temple? The most holy place. So he goes beyond the flesh, goes beyond the soul, into the spirit. So Jesus is the temple, and God is in the most holy place. So if Jesus is the temple, where is God residing? In the most holy place, where is that? In Jesus. Okay. So God is in Jesus. That is why Jesus says in John, that it is not me doing, but the Father who lives in me, because I am the temple of God. And I will destroy this temple in three days, and in three days I will raise it up. But because the Father is in me, I want you to also come in me. If anyone is in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. But in Christ, there is another person in Christ who is called God. But before you can go in there, the, first of all, it's only the high priest who can go in there. You understand that? But the high priest has to go in there every year. So God is in Christ, and Jesus says, this, I am the temple, I am the house, and God is in the most holy place in me. But I don't want you to be in the outer courts. I don't want you to be in the holy place. I want you to be in the most holy place. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4. Come boldly before the throne of grace, that you may receive mercy where? At the mercy seat. Okay? So that you may receive mercy and find grace. So mercy gives you grace. Where is mercy? At the mercy seat, in the most holy place. Okay. So God is in Christ. In the most holy place. And Jesus says, not only is God in me, I want you to be in me as well. But you cannot go in there. There is a holy God in there. And the high priest is the only one who can go in there. And he has to go there once every year because he sanctifies himself, but you are all unholy. So he goes to offer sacrifice for the sins. But Jesus says, I want to go in there. And I want to offer sacrifice for your sins, but I don't want to do it one time. I want to do it for eternity. That is why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, what we just read, that he went in there to offer uh, eternal redemption for sin. So he doesn't have to go in there every year. He goes in one and it's done. And the Bible says in Peter that he has made you high priest unto God. Come on. So now guess what? You can go in there. Why? Because you are the high priest. But the problem, you don't go there once every year because eternal redemption has been made. So come boldly before the throne of grace. That you may obtain favor and mercy where at the mercy seat. So Christ is the house. And in me there are many rooms. If that were not so, I would not have told you. So guess what? Not only am I the house, not only am I the temple, not only uh, 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 am I the house and the temple, not only am I the high priest and the offering as well, but I am the way into the temple. So Jesus says, Jesus says, let's listen to what Jesus is saying. Just, let's, let's read this again from verse 1, chapter 14, verse 1. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And then he switches. I told you everything Jesus said in John doesn't make any sense. Just open right up. You see, they'll ask him a question and you'll be, you think he's beating about the bush. But he's speaking deep spiritual truth, which the carnal mind cannot comprehend. Verse 2. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would not have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. You understand that? So where is, how is he going to prepare? I'm going to offer sacrifices for the sin. What was he about to do? He was going to die. The lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. So when his body was bruised and he was torn open, as he was bruised, he made a way. That's why the Bible says when he died, the temple of the earthly tabernacle, the curtains, the veil was torn and the holy, most holy place was exposed. Because everyone can now come in. So it was the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. And the moment Jesus was bruised and the sacrifice was offered, the Bible says that the, the, the curtain that separates the most holy place from the outer court and the inner court, the, the curtain was torn. So everyone had access to the throne of grace. Everyone had access to the mercy seat. Let's keep going. So he says, and if I go, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you may... You, you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So he's not talking about heaven in this context. You understand? And he says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. 
Verse 5, Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know that with Jesus, I am the way? I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why? He's in me. So in order to get to the Father, he must first go through me. Because he is in me. Okay. So no one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Verse 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, verse 9, don't you know, don't you know me, Philip? Because, again, Colossians says that the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. So whatever he manifests in the body from him, he's manifesting God. So he only says what he hears his Father saying. So God is speaking through him. God is saying, so Jesus is speaking and says, if you know me, you know the Father. Philip said that, show me the Father, and God says, don't you know me? I've been with you all this time in the human form and you still don't know me. Don't you know me? So Jesus said, don't you know me? Verse 9, Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? How can you? Verse 10, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The word I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing the work. So where is the Father living? In Christ. Where are we supposed to be? In Christ. But well, we cannot be because of sin. So an offering has to be made before we can be in Christ. So before the, the, cruci the, the, cruci the crucifixion and death of Christ, we could not be in Christ. Now I'll prove all that to you from the scripture as we go along. We could not be in Christ. So he has to die. What is the preparation? Him dying on the cross and saving us. That is the preparation. So the Bible says we were bought with the precious blood of Christ. You understand? So the only way we could be in Christ, 2 Corinthians, we just said that. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All this is from God, who was reconciling us to himself. Where was he? In Christ. Reconciling us to himself. Through Christ. And his death. Okay, so I'm going to prepare a place for you. How? As an offering. To offer eternal redemption for your sins. Then you can be in there. So it is the Father living in me who is in the word. Verse 11. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So Jesus is telling you, believe me when I tell you that I am the Father and the Father is in me. Believe me when I tell you that. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. What do we do at the mercy seat? Ask. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. may receive mercy right at the mercy seat so where is God's throne of grace in Christ let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and what would mercy what would we find at the mercy seat grace to help us in our time of need amen okay so let's let's continue from John chapter 14 verse 15 Jesus said if you love me, John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commands. 
and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you, to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you, and will be in you. So the Spirit is with you, but he will be in you. He's not yet in you, but he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also would live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. <laughs> oh, come on, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's keep on, let's keep on. Verse 21. See, when you read these things, come on. You, because you're Christians, you act like it makes sense to you. <laughs> okay, let's go. Verse 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, you know, there were two Judases, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Like, Anyone who will obey my teaching, my father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. Where is the home? The house. And we will make our home with them. Where is the home? I. I am the temple. So we will make our home with them. That is the Father's house. So there is grace in Christ for everyone. Because it's not the Father's will that any should perish. And we would make our home... Uh, 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 where, where was I? Which verse? 23. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Jesus is speaking and says, these are not my words. Verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you, by the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you will be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. Verse 31. But he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Amen. Amen. So, he's speaking of the temple now. I. I. We come and make our home with them. Amen. So when you come in here, when you come in me, the Father is in me. The Father is in me. John chapter 10 verse 30, what does it say? I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. So he lives in me. I am the home. I am the temple. I, I am the temple and the Father is in the most holy place. He is in me. I want you to be in the most holy place as well. Okay, so now I have to go prepare a place for you in there. I have to prepare a place for you to come in there. There are many rooms in there, but I have to prepare a place for you. Now I'm going to prepare that place for you. Jesus goes to the cross. He dies. He dies. The curtain is torn. Access has been made. But we are yet to go in there. And then he finally resurrects. Let's go to John chapter 20. There was a verse in 16 I wanted us to even go through before. But don't give up. Okay, John chapter 20. Let's go to 16 verse 17. We will come back to 20, okay? 16 verse 17. We'll come back. So he's still talking to them. John chapter 16 verse 17. Are you there? John chapter 16 verse 17. Are you all there? Yeah. At this, some of the disciples said to one another. Okay, verse 16. Okay, John chapter 16 verse 16. Let's talk there. Jesus went on to say, In a little while, you will see me no more. And then, after a little while, you will see me. 
Why? Because I'm going to prepare a place. <laughs> Verse 17. And this, some of the disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. Why am I going to the Father? Into the most holy place, offer sacrifice. So the priest is with you outside all the time, but when he goes into the holy place, he goes alone. So now you are seeing me, but in a little while I'm going into the most holy place where only the priest can go, and you wouldn't see me. But afterwards, I would come back. And when I come back, the curtain is torn. And we all have access to the throne of grace. That is why he's called the firstborn among many brethren. So, he says, verse 17, and this, so he says, let me start from 16 again, this is so beautiful. Jesus went on to say, in a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. You get it? Because he's going to prepare, so you will see him then. But after he's prepared, I will come and take you to be with me. Is that not what he said? So he says, I'm going to prepare a place. And when I'm done, I will come back and take you, and you will be with me in the house. So in a little while, you will see me. But after a little while, you will see me. Because I'm going to prepare the place on the cross. At this, verse 17, at this, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Verse 19, Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about it, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me? Verse 20, very truly. See, I told you, Jesus doesn't say anything. Are you asking yourself? So, uh, brother, are you asking Ines what I mean by in a little while you no longer see me and in a little while you see me? Are you asking her what it means? Let me tell you what it means. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn <laughs> while the world rejoices. Go read the book of John. Like, see, if I can sit down and read the book of John, I laugh from beginning to the end. It's so funny how, go read the book of John. And, and just think about this boy, humans, just as we were. And imagine the expression when Jesus he asks Jesus the question and he's saying all these things. <laughs> Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. So what does he take? Take note of this. He says, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Take note of that phrase. Your grief will be turned to joy. Your grief will be turned to joy. Amen. All right. So, verse 21. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy. Now, he's speaking about a lot of joy. Because of her joy that a child is born into the world. Verse 22. So with you, now your time is of grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. So now you are in grief. So the woman who is in labor, she's in pain. So she's going to bear a child. So she's in pain, she's in anguish. But when she gives birth, there is joy. And she forgets the anguish. She forgets the pain. And he says, in the same way, so it is with you. You are grieved right now. But very soon, something will happen. And you would rejoice again. And no one will take this joy from you. Okay, so let's go to verse 20. Chapter 20, sorry. Chapter 20, are you there? Um, chapter 20, verse 17. Chapter 20, verse 17. Are you there? Okay. Okay. John chapter 20, verse 17. Let's go, let's go up a bit. Let's go to John chapter 20, verse not 10. John chapter 20, verse 10. John chapter 20, verse 10. Then the disciples, so Jesus has died. Okay. They buried him. He's gone. You know, with Jesus, all of a sudden, he's gone. He's dead. He went to the cross. The 
the sacrifice has been offered. So why is he now? He cannot be seen. Why? He's in the holy place. So you have to stand outside and wait until the priest comes. So the sacrifice has been offered, the lamb. John said, Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1. So, verse 10. John chapter 20, verse 10. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in a remake, Rabboni, which means teacher. Verse 17, Jesus said, Do not hold to, on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. I have to go to the Father. I haven't yet gone to the Father because I have to go to the Father and when I make room, I come and take you to the Father. But I haven't yet gone to the Father. I've offered the sacrifice, but I haven't gone to the Father. I want to come and take you guys there. So do not hold on to me. He wasn't speaking physically. You watch in the movies. I, I remember as a kid, I was going to the movie and then, you know, Mary saw him and said, Rabona, and she went on her knees and was about to touch him. And Jesus is like, don't touch me. <laughs> that is not what he was doing here. Remember the language of Jesus in John. That is not what he's talking about here. So he says, do not hold on to me. Do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So now I'm going to the Father. We know that Jesus ascended in Acts chapter 1. Yes, sir. So he said, right now, don't cling to me. Don't hold on to me. He's not speaking physically. You understand? I'm still in the process of preparing the room. So don't hold on to me right now. He's not talking about physical holding the feet. Uh, no, not that. I have to prepare the place and I come and take you. So don't hold on to me right now. So go and tell my brothers, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Verse 19, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. I thought he was going to heaven. That is not what he was talking about in this context. He says, Peace be with you. Let's read on. Verse 20, after he said this, he showed them his hands and said, and his, his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Your grief will be turned to joy. So in a little while, you will not see me anymore. But in a little while, you will see me. And then, so right now you are in grief because you wouldn't see me. But in a little while, you would see me. And then your grief will be turned into joy. And no one will take that from you. The Bible says that before Jesus came, they were in fear. Hiding. And they had locked the doors. Let me tell you something. When Jesus appeared in the room, they were like, oh, Jesus. They were running and finding places to go. Imagine you are scared of the Pharisees and everyone trying to kill you, and then someone just appears in the room like that. That's, I believe that's why when Jesus came in, he says, peace be with you. <laughs> he said it two times. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. It is done. It is done. The room is made ready. You can get into it. You can get into the room now. And if you just said that, okay, okay, let's go. Let me not rush ahead of myself. So, so he says, and he went, verse 21, they were overjoyed. Verse, verse, they were overjoyed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Verse 22. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. 
The Bible says that if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to him. So they did not, they were in the possession of Christ until they had the spirit of God. So this is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost in power. This is the baptism of salvation. When they are saved. Amen. So you have the spirit within you and the spirit upon you. The spirit comes upon you for service with power. Amen. And the spirit comes within you. So two manifestations of the spirit. The spirit within you and the spirit upon you. The spirit comes within you for your sakes. It comes upon you for the sake of the church to walk in power. Amen. So after the Bible says, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to him. So what did Jesus do when he was done? He breathed on them and said, receive the spirit. You belong to me now. You are a member of this house. He, received, he breathed on them. He received the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. I thought he said, Don't touch me. For having yet ascended to my father. Is that what he was talking about? Now he says, Touch me. Put your hand in there. He says, He says, Put your finger in here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Verse 28, Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Amen. Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So, there is a house that God is in. And now, Jesus went to prepare the place. He went to offer the sacrifice. Okay, so Jesus says, I'm ascending to my father. Wait. But then he's here again. And he's touching the disciples and all of that. As a matter of fact, he even went and fried fish with them one time. By the, by the beach. They went and roasted fish. He and Peter and the disciples. And they had to... <laughs> They went and had a, a meal. Do you understand that? And many other things. And the Bible says, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says, all the righteous men who died from the beginning of time, all of them rose from the grave. And they walked in Jerusalem for a period of 40 days. They walked in a period of 40 days. So now, in my father's house, what is the house? I am the house. There are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. But what I'm going to do is, so it's my father's house, so who is in there? The father. But who is not? You are not. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, in the process of preparing the place, when I'm going to prepare the place, you wouldn't see me for a while, and you'll be sad. But when I'm done preparing it, you would see me, and you'll be glad. And I'll come and take you to be with me. And where I am, there you will also be. Amen. There you will also be. So even me going to prepare the place, it's not me who is just doing it, but it's the Father in me who is leading me to prepare the place. So all the work that I'm doing is the Father in me who is doing this work. So I'm going to prepare a place in me. And he goes to prepare, and he comes back, and they are filled with joy. He breathes on them and said, receive the Spirit. Therefore, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, hang on. Someone should read that verse. Now, all things are God, who has reconciled us to 
apostle himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed us to the world of reconciliation. Read it again. The same uh, 17 minutes. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imposing their, trans their trespasses to them, and has committed us to the world of reconciliation. Okay. Do you need any further explanation? <laughs> Second period, oh, I'm still in Hebrews. <laughs> Oh, it's open here. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So who was reconciling us? And where was he? So he was reconciling us to him. So where was he? He was at home. <laughs> reconciling us to himself through Christ. Hmm. All this from God was reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. That God was reconciling the world to himself in what? Look at verse 19. Verse 19. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting the people's sin against them. Why? Because the high priest had gone there. Not counting the sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are, we are therefore um, Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We employ you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. So listen to what he's saying. He says, he says this, verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. Watch this. So Christ is the house, right? And God is in Christ. And the Bible says in 19 that in Christ, he's reconciling us back to himself. Okay? And now we've been re God working in Christ. God is at home. He's working from home. You understand? Now you see all those ads, work from home, make how many thousands of dollars? <laughs> all the, most of them are not real. The only real home is God working from home. Amen. So God is at home, working at home. And he's working through Christ and he's reconciling us back to himself. Okay, so through Christ, so if anyone is in Christ, in the Christian, all this pastor, we behold, all things are becoming you. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So just like Jesus was a house that God dwelt in and reconciled the world to himself, God is saying, now that you're in the house, I have an assignment for you. You're going to be in the house, but guess what? You're also going to be a house. So you're going to be a house within a house. And the people who don't know you, there are many rooms in you for them. Um. <laughs> because you are in God. You are with God. Guess what? You are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. <laughs> so, 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 Jesus says, I am the door, okay? I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the doorway. So Jesus is the doorway to the Father. You are the doorway to Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, how will they hear if there is no preacher? And the Bible said, how will there be a preacher if God hasn't sent the preacher? So the only way that they'll hear about Christ is by someone preaching. So what is that person? A house. But this house is also in another house with God. Amen. So now, Guess what? You are a house. You want proof? You want proof that your house? Okay, let's finish verse 19 before. God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So, what was Christ doing? Reconciling the world to himself. Now God says, oh yeah, take. The message of reconciliation is yours. Okay? We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, representatives of Christ. As though God were making his appeal through us. So the appeal is no longer through Christ standing there, but through us, because we are representatives of Christ. Okay? 
Let's go to First Corinthians chapter three. Verse 17. No. Verse 16. Amen. What does it say? Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Don't you know <laughs> that you yourself are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in your midst? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter six. You don't have to open it. First Corinthians chapter six, verse eighteen. Was that? Do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So God is living on the inside of you. You are the house of God, and together these houses come together to make a city. A city that is set upon a hill mm. that cannot be hidden. Mm. Mm. We cannot be hidden because we are the light of the world. The city is full of light. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So this city is set upon a hill and is flooded with light. We are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. So we are God's temple and God is making it appeal through us. Amen. So, God didn't just come to get us to heaven, although he would take us there eventually. Amen. Amen. But God didn't just come to get us to heaven. He came to get heaven into us. Amen. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay? Jesus said that. When people say to you that, that, look, here is the kingdom of God, or there it is, he said, don't pay attention to them. For the kingdom of God does not come with observation, but the kingdom of God is within you and among you. Amen. So you see yourself in my father's house. He was saying nothing about heaven in this context. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Amen. See, it's easy. This is what we've heard our whole lives. You know, we've, we've preached it from the pulpit. Uh, uh, you know, we have songs about it and all of that. And it blesses us. Amen. You sing those songs and think about, you know, when you get to the street, by and by and all of that. It's good. You know, it encourages us. But that is what, not what he was talking about in this context. And we will come and make our home with him. You are in the same home as God now. You are a child of God. You are a daughter of God. You are still with God. And now, you are also a house. And God, by his spirit, lives in you. So just like the Father was living in Christ, the spirit is living in you. The spirit of the Father is living in you. And you are the home where God lives. When you go about, you carry God on the inside of you. The Bible says in Philippians that it is God who works in you both to do, both to will and do his good pleasure. It is, so watch this. It is God who works in you, just like he was working in Christ. So it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Because you are the temple now. Amen. Paul said that, don't you, that you yourself are living epistles, known and read by all men. Amen. In my father's house, there are many. Let me show you this. John, uh, what was it again? John 14. Praise God. Come on, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So now let's read John 14 again in that light and see something. Okay, but before that, let me see if I can get, uh, I have this book. Um,
Amen. John chapter 14. So Jesus is telling them, do not let your heart be troubled. Okay, there's something I'll touch on again here. Do not let your heart be troubled. John chapter 14. let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. So he's speaking of himself. <laughs> if that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. And the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. So watch this. No one comes to the Father except through me. So how do you go through the house? The door. How do you go into the house? Through the door. Amen. John chapter 10. Just, I, am the, I am the true shepherd. Everyone who came before me were liars and robbers. They have to come through the door. Amen. Jesus is the only way to the Father. It's not about what religion you, you, you know or what you worship. It's about Jesus. It's about God. See, it's not, see, sometimes people look at and think it was this good guy. It's not about a man coming and saying, it's about God taking on the form of a human being. This is here I am. Okay, that is why it says in John, John chapter 1, that John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's open to John chapter 1. I mean, the book of John is just, I mean, it's just a wonderful, I mean, it's just crazy. Amen. If, if you want to take someone out on a date, take them to go see the book of John. Amen. <laughs> you download it. You, they, have, they have the videos that you download it. Glory, <laughs> Take guys, hey. Thank you out today. Amen. We're going to the movies. The movies like none other. You get a laptop there. You get some chalfan and chopsticks. I mean, John is just amazing. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Come on, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Okay, so John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 12. Let's start from verse 9. The book of John, you can just start from anywhere and it's just good. <laughs> John chapter 1, verse 9. The true light that gives light to everyone who's coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, not of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Verse 14. The word became flesh. Hmm. The word became what? Flesh. flesh. So we learned about what the word of God is. You, you remember that? We said that the word is an expression of a thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm thinking something, but you cannot, you don't know what I'm thinking until I say it. So I didn't, it, 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 I, 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 it's kind of like I'm an embodiment of what I was thinking even before I said it. So before I even said it, before you knew what I was thinking, I was thinking it. But you only got to know what I was thinking when I said it. So the word is an expression of thought. You cannot see my thoughts, but you can know my thoughts by the words that I speak. Okay, so you can know what I'm thinking by the words that I speak. And the Bible says, Jesus is the word of God. He is the expression of, so the word is an expression of thought. 
What is thought? Thought is the unseen part. But a word expresses the unseen part. So the Bible says that Jesus, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, 15. It says Jesus is the image of the invisible God. What is the invisible God? The thought. What is the, the visible one? The word. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Okay. So anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. All right. So if I'm thinking, I want God to bless you. Right. If I say, I want God to bless you. Okay. So if I say, I want God to bless you, I'm thinking it. But he doesn't know I'm thinking it. But the moment that I say, I want God to bless you, he knows the exact picture of my thoughts because it has been proclaimed by a word. That my thought is invisible, but my words have been heard. You understand? And my words now represent the unseen part. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. God is a spirit. So he takes on the form. So when the Bible says Jesus is the word of God, that's what Colossians say. He's the image of the invisible God. It's giving you a picture of the unseen God. You understand? So the fullness of God dwells in him bodily. So, and the word became flesh. So you understand what I mean by the word became flesh? Yeah. Okay? And, and uh, um, verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. He came from the father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is God in the flesh. He's not just some guy. It's God who took on the form of a human. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I, lo I love, that Paul was just such a bold guy. I mean, we have to talk about boldness one of these days. Amen. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. God says, if you don't come boldly, you're not getting anything. Paul, Paul uh, John, 1 John says that. If, if our conscience condemns us, God is greater than our conscience. But if our conscience doesn't condemn us, then we have boldness for, with God and we receive whatever we ask. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Just that all things are possible to him that believe. Amen. We have to go to God boldly because we have access into the most holy place. It's open. So the holy, most holy place is open for you and you're going there you're like, Holy place. <laughs> it's holy place. Uh, and then you step your foot in there. And the Bible says, uh-uh. If you go back and forth, James, you are like a wave that is tossed to and fro. You understand that? You are unstable in all your ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. You are double. You doubt. You understand? So you go into the holy place. You go in there like you belong. You walk in there, I'm going to see the Father. Amen. You understand? You walk in there and say, Father, <laughs> praise God. Amen. You need to be bold before God. Be bold before God. Amen. Amen. See, most of the things that you can, you can accomplish such great things, just walk in the boldness of the Spirit. The Bible says in Acts chapter, Acts, Acts chapter 4, when the church was persecuted, they said, Father, stretch forth your hands. Okay? He said, he said Father, uh, through your holy child, Jesus Christ, uh, stretch forth your hands and heal the sick and perform miracles and grant boldness unto your servants that we may proclaim your word and that signs and wonders will follow through your holy child Jesus Christ. Step out in boldness, do what God has called you to do. Amen. Be bold. Amen. That's the thing about Paul. I mean, Paul is just, when the Peter was doing something, Peter is the head of the church, Peter is doing something, Paul says, Peter, sit down. <laughs> You're a Jew, yet you're acting like a Gentile. Because Peter was being a hypocrite at some point in the book of Galatians. He was acting as a hypocrite. And Paul says, Peter, you are a Jew, yet you're acting like a Gentile. What you're doing is not good. And Paul said that even Barnabas was almost led astray in, in the same hypocrisy. Okay? I mean, you need to be bold for God. Amen. So, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. I love this. is one of my favorite portions of scripture. Paul said that beyond all question, beyond all question, the mystery which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen of angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. I love the way the kingdom speaks it. Let me see if I can get. Uh, 
first let's talk about previous system model. This, listen, listen to what he says. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, there is no controversy. There is no question. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. How? In Christ. So meaning, God was walking among us the whole time. Where was his home? In the body of Christ. Okay? That is why his body had to die. Okay, he died that we might gain life. So, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, which is God was manifest. So God was working with humanity this whole while. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So this, the whole Bible is summed up in John, the first chapter of the verse 16. The whole Bible from Genesis to this is the story of the whole Bible. The story of the whole Bible is summed up in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. God came in the flesh. He was justified or attested by the Spirit. Uh, he was seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, the unbelievers, believed on in the world, and was caught up in glory, received up in glory. Amen. Amen. And God is still manifest in the flesh. God is still manifest in the flesh through you and I. Amen. And our home is with the Father. So be that conscious. Be conscious of who you are. Amen. You are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are the abode of God. You make your home in God. Amen. You, you, are, you, you and the Father are one, just like Jesus. Together with Christ are we hidden in God. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. You know that you are in the home of God. Just think about that. Imagine if, uh, who would you consider to be the most powerful person on earth or the most important person? Uh, you know, let's just put Bill Gates up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who would you say? Dion T. Say that. Great the <laughs> So, imagine you, you are in a house with the most powerful person in the world. And, and you, don't, you, you are able to address them on a personal basis. And God has established a relationship with us through Christ Jesus. Amen. We have a relationship with God through Christ Jesus. Come boldly. When you go before God, that is faith. When you go before God in boldness, because you know that you are going to your Father. You are not going to God, you are going to Father. I tell you all the time, if, if, the, if, if, if someone is going to see the President, they go to see Mr. President. But if it's child, child doesn't go to see Mr. President, they go to see their dad. They go to see their Father. And the world may know him as God, but we know him as Father. Jesus said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father. Mm. Jesus never called him God. He always called him Father. Sometimes there are certain things Jesus said that, Father, the only reason I'm saying it is for the sake of these people here. If they weren't here, I wouldn't say it because you and me, I'm in you. You know. So I'm only saying it so that these people here would believe that you have sent me. And that I am in you and you are in me. Amen. So go boldly before God. Amen. When you pray, you pray with boldness. You take authority in boldness. Amen. And God would work and confirm what He's doing in your life. Amen. It's power. It's a powerful thing that we have Christ in our life. No question, like Paul says, great is the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh. The creator of this universe, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Lord who is God over everything was manifest in the flesh just for your sake. And the reason why God came in the flesh, just think how great this is. Just think a second thing. God came in the flesh to reconcile you to himself. That if you were the only human being on earth, he still would have done it. And he came, God, and he took on the form of a humble servant just to reconcile you to himself. And to make his home with you. 
and now he's living in you and working through you. Amen. So guess what? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. You don't need to fear, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. That is one of the places that we need to step in. We need to step into the place of soundness of mind. A lot of believers have been tormented in their mind for whatever the reason may be. That is the, the battlefield, the place that the enemy tries to attack you. And it tries to attack the mind of people, the reason of people. And God, God blesses us with sound mind. See, meditate upon that. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Amen. Soundness of mind. It's very important. If the enemy wants to attack you, he would come through that way. That is why I always tell you, be very careful of the thing that you expose yourself to. The music you listen to. You understand that? That, that the movies you watch, you understand? Just be very careful. You need to scrutinize the things you give yourself to because they affect your consciousness. And, they, they, and either way, whatever you give yourself to is going to feed you. Either positive or negative, you're going to get fed. You understand that? But you can decide what you get fed on. And, and what you get fed on is going to begin to work in your mind. And it's not going to cause you to have faith and boldness before God. Or it's going to cause you to come low. Amen. 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 Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. Any questions? You have to mm -hmm. close early today. Oh, yeah. Ah, you want to leave your time so that you can read. I love the book. They usually run shifts. Uh, the security men so the way Jesus made. That was actually what I was looking for and I said I was looking for something. I couldn't find it. So, guys, you guys need to get if you if you, if you use the best uh, software you can get Bible software is um, Olive Tree. Okay, you actually, you know that they sell uh, books there. Not just Bible. They sell Christian literature they're like whatever book you want. The Christian book. You can just go type it. Like, there's a whole bunch of books you can get in there. These are the Bibles that I have with Olive Tree. Uh, these, are, these are all the Bibles. And then, uh, let me see. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can get there. Uh, I have bought audio Bibles there. I have uh, dictionaries that I bought there. You see all of them. You can get, uh, this is visual guide to Bible events. So you can see like the, the real pictures, you know, like the historical backgrounds and everything. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that you can get that you can feed yourself. Um, stand by with I have archaeological study Bible notes. NIV cultural background, study Bible notes, and just just go there, and I have also, these are just um, books, just Christian literature, uh, seeing the supernatural, how to discern and battle in the spirit realm by Jim Ives, uh, visual guides, Bible events, uh, and just a whole bunch of other books that I have in there. Uh, this one is uh, Angel Stories, first time I count from some men of God, uh, the revealer of secrets, there's a God in heaven, just a whole bunch of books, okay? Christian books, Bible, whatever you want. You can get you can get it there. Alright. Take advantage of this opportunity. People, our parents and you know, people before us, they never have this opportunity. And you have it at your fingertips. You know, when I when I, when I came here, I was real worried because like I like to read a lot. And when I was telling me, like I packed all my books, like I went to my library, took all my books and just packed them in these boxes and you know, just take them all around and kept them somewhere. And I was hoping that, you know, when I come here, I'll get somewhere to buy books and you know, fill up again. Nothing. So, and I've been using Olive Tree like way back, but I didn't know that. So once I think was it last year or early this year, and something just it's like let me just check in there, and I just went and saw in there. I mean, tons of books. 
then you can take advantage of this uh, opportunity to feed yourself. Okay, uh, I hear someone always say that, uh, do something today that uh, uh, the you of tomorrow will thank you for. Okay, do something today that the you of tomorrow will thank you And see, sometimes it doesn't feel, you know, you may not enjoy it, but you're feeding yourself. You're feeding yourself. Okay, you equip yourself. You understand that? So feed yourself, do that. Uh, I was looking for something. Back to your question. I have this uh, book that I bought, uh, Vine's Expository of like a Bible Words. So I study Bible, uh, like you know, the, the words in the Bible that God gave me. And that's exactly what I was looking for, but I couldn't find it. It was speaking about in the Father's house, there are many dwelling places. And it says it doesn't speak about demarcations. That is not what he was talking about. Okay? That's exactly like what I was looking for. I couldn't find it. It says, when he says to my father, so now, again, you know, we look at things through the lens of our, you know, our, uh, our cultural background or what we are used to. So immediately I say room, you think of the room. That is not what he's talking about. So, for example, if, you know, I come in and I was like, she can say that, oh, I've got plenty of room here. Room is just a space that is made available for you. So you can say that, oh, this car's got a lot of room at the back. So it's not a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> You understand? So you can say, oh, I've got, uh, someone say, oh, you want me to push the chair forward? Oh, it's, it's all right, I've got enough room here. So it's not speaking of bedroom, but the moment you hear room, you, you think, oh, this bedroom, like the king size bed is there, you know, or queen size, whatever. You understand that? And, and that is not what he's talking about. He's talking about space for you. To so each one of us has been assigned grace. And the grace is found in Christ. So it's speaking, you, just look at the book of uh, uh, John. Jesus speaks a lot in parables, everything, almost everything in parables. You understand? So you listen to what he's saying, you listen to the only thing. When he was saying rooms, he wasn't talking about rooms that you go there, you have a room in Christ Jesus, there is one house for you. But you are in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, and the room is that, see, a room is a personal space. And what that means is you get the opportunity to have a personal relationship with God. You understand? Your room is your personal space. We all have our personal space. You understand? Even in your dormitories, if you're a roommate with someone, you still have your personal space. Maybe. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and so it speaks about something personal that you have with God. So in my father's house, there are many rooms, and we're not prepared for for all of you. So, no, just think about this for a second. Back to what we used to hear. Jesus is going to prepare a place for us in heaven, in the mansion. Like, in my father's house, there are many rooms. What do you think he was going to do? Gabriel, have you guys clean room one to room 20? No, just, 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 just think about it for a second. Uh, uh, yeah, we made sure. So Jesus said, I am going to prepare the place. Now, listen, and when I'm done preparing it, I'll come back and take you. So all these years, he's not done preparing it. <laughs> Even though Jesus is still cleaning. <laughs> So Jesus is still Jesus is still checking the rooms. Oh, no, what were you thinking? Just think about what you're using. Jesus is still cleaning the place and you know moving the earth. Ah, man, this is a Nina room. What is that dust doing over there? <laughs> hey, you guys should change the, the couch and bring the couch there. You, you know what I'm saying? But I'm making a space for you in me that you may have opportunity before the King of Kings. You understand? So it's not talking about what it actually said, what I read from uh, Vines about the word. It's actually not rooms, it's dwelling places. So in my father's house are many dwelling places. Okay? And what, what I, when I was reading from Vines, I've forgotten the word, used some word. It says that it does not refer to demarcations, physical demarcations that we have. So like this is just demarcation. This is, it wasn't talking about any physical thing. You understand that? It's speaking, the Bible says that God does not dwell in our uh, uh, Te temples or tabernacles made with human hands. The heaven is the throne and the earth is his footstool. What house would you make? That is sufficient. That's what the word of God says. The heaven is the throne of God, the earth is his footstool. What kind of house can you make? You understand? That, that can contain God. Amen. So it's not about uh, physical structure, but it's a space that you have with God and you spend time with God. Amen. That's why anytime you can call upon God. Amen. You don't need a high priest. With a high priest, it wasn't personal. But now, you have access because you are also a high priest. So you go in Christ. If you are in Christ, you have direct access to the Father. You understand? That's why you, you don't need to go through anyone or any saints or anything. You just have direct access to God. Amen. All right. Yes. Amen. Amen. People of God, you know humanity, mine, mine is not a question, but I, I have something. And uh, Mark, 
with, with all respect, I need to go on with this. Please, if you ever go, if you ever went on the internet to search for the mysteries about the deep life of Jesus, you would most likely type the name probably T.D. Jakes or Miles Muro or all these higher persons in Christ. And the message is given as you think it is mad. But I don't know if you see what I see. It is not mad even as the message. And we should be thankful to God for the messages we are receiving. You shouldn't take, take this for granted. So please, I'm begging you. Bless, bless his life. Whatever you want to happen in your life, please. Expose that blessing to him. We thank you. We exalt your name, Lord Jesus. I came with the intent of coming to speak. I never knew I was be secret. We bless your name, Holy Father. We exalt your name. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this blessing. We are most grateful to you, Lord. We thank you for this life, Holy Father. We pray that, Lord Jesus, you strengthen him. I have never in my life, Lord, seen the right to see you in this man and the Holy Father, the man of his name, Lord. Bless him, Heavenly Father. Shower his blessings. Shower your blessings upon him, Heavenly Father. In the ministry and assignment you have given him, Heavenly Father. Glorify him, Lord Jesus Christ. They are all witnesses, Heavenly Father. We will see in future and we give glory to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Bishop, Father. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We exalt you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. All glory, honor, and honor be unto you, Holy Spirit. Bless your name, Heavenly Father. We exalt your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Wow. God bless you guys. It's powerful. Powerful. Amen. Amen. Powerful. I don't think I can talk anymore. <laughs> it's powerful. God bless you guys. Amen. We strengthen one another, amen. We, the Bible says, I encourage one another while it is still cold today. Do you understand that? And uh, we, 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 uh, we all encourage one another. Like I said, uh, no one is an island by themselves. We learn things from one another. And just like maybe you guys may think you're learning things from them, also learning from you, like a lot. You know, uh, uh, see, some, sometimes even just maybe in, 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 in Speaking, maybe you guys just say something and it's a draw. Like Elena sitting here talking all the time, you know. <laughs> like when I was speaking, she always says, I actually had a dream recently, right? And I was sitting in a meeting and I was feeling, I was, I was talking with someone, I can't remember what it was. And I didn't write that. And every time I was saying something, I'll see Elena sitting by me and say something and then I repeat what she's saying. <laughs> like I do in the Sabbath class, you know. And then she'll say something and then I'll repeat it in uh, uh, what, what, what. You know, whatever that meeting was, and is, I think it's about teachability. You know, the fact that we are able to, uh, like Emmanuel was saying, humble ourselves and learn from one another. That is that is so powerful. Amen. That is that is so powerful. And we make sure that even whatever God is doing in our life or where we're going, uh, the Bible says, "Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to." Okay. So always make yourself open to God and. Uh, uh, Check your heart to make sure that everything is right with God. Amen. It's really important. I, I really appreciate that. It's, it's good you follow the leading of the Spirit. Amen. It's good you follow the leading of the Spirit. That's powerful. Amen. And I believe that this prayer that you guys have prayed will sustain me for like a long time. Amen. 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 I feel strong already. Let's start. Thank you very much. One more question. Amen. Yes. Um, to add to what the Mark said. Sure, sure, sure. Come with us. And then there's a question. Just like Mark said, in Revelation 21, I wish the verse 20, 20, 20, 20, it says that, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Now in verse 22, he says, And I saw no temple therein. Just like he said, it doesn't mean like demarcations. He said, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Is that temple. So he said, We are in Christ. And Christ is that house. So it's that temple that he's talking about, not physical demarcations. And he says in verse 23, and the city had no seed, no, no need of the sun, neither the moon. Yes, sir. 
to shine in me for the glory of God in light of me. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Amen. 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 See, most of the time you read, you read, you read, you read Revelation, right? See, this why you read the book of Revelation and you all think it's about, you know, future. The book of Revelation is actually about past, present, and future. It's not all about what is going to happen. It speaks about things that have happened in the past, things that are happening in the present, and things that won't happen. Amen. But when you see it in that life, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. Amen. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. Amen. Yes. Anyone with a comment to add to this? Yes. Um, you know, while I was back home, there was this man of God that I really respect. And so every time we're saying, surely God be this and mercy shall follow you because we dwell in the house of the Lord. It would say no, because we are the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So with all your explanation, I think it's kind of buttress what the man of God is always saying, that we are already the temple of the Lord. Yeah. We're not living in a building or something, yeah. that we are the temple of the Lord. So thank you very much, Mark. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So you have to understand that you are the temple of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. You are the temple of God. So when we say, shall the goodness and message are for us all of you, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. We are the house of the Lord. Amen. And Christ is also the house of the Lord. So we dwell in Christ. Right? Like Stella is saying, you don't have the consciousness of like, this is the house. This is nothing. You are the house. And like confidence was saying, we come together, one temple. Amen. So if we say we dwell in the house of God, it's not this, that you should have a consciousness in Christ. Amen. The Most High does not dwell in buildings made out of human hands. Amen. And you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the house of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, are we done? Any more? We have one more minute. Any more? Anything else to say? Yes, Clarence. We are the temple of the Spirit, amen. amen. So, um, just want to me that what happens in my house, in the house of God, there's no sorrow, there's no shame, there's no guilt. There's always joy and, and, and light. Then with this um, consciousness, that's why God, uh, Jesus was saying that we'll have joy and that no one will take it away from us. Amen. 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 God is good and all the time. God is good and I've been using this thing for like a long time and I'm still not so comfortable with it. Even the microphone. Amen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been quiet for some time now. Brina, please speak. So much you can do the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last person. Uh, amen. 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 Um, so, yes, we started. Uh, it was interesting and to remove myself from the front day because I know myself to get very excited when I get meat. So I came to the front. So um, I think what was key was in the first sentence uh, when we are still with George 14. And then it says, uh, Do not be troubled, believe in God and believe in me also. So he then took me to John 3 16 to say, uh, for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe. So Jesus in saying believe, he was actually still in line with himself. Uh, and then there's something that I wanted to say. This is a question I was actually waiting for next week. Because uh, over the past weeks, I've been meditating upon the same John 20. Because uh, I thought to say when Jesus said to me, uh, don't touch me as yet, he was still going to go and get the glorified body and still come. So I thought that by the time that he came and then Thomas was now putting his finger, he was now coming back with the glorified body. 
and it, would, and it made sense in my head to say, okay, the doors were locked and with a glorified body. Exactly, just like you said at the time, you say he was vibrating at the same frequency as the walls that he could walk in. So now it, this has just brought another dimension. So I think it will. It's limitless, you know. When he was walking on the road, you know, with Emos and uh, the other guy, Cleopas, was it Cleopas? Yeah. On the road to Emos, with Cleopas and the other guy. And, uh, you know, they couldn't even recognize he was the one. And immediately he gave thanks. You know, they were at the meal. Immediately he gave thanks. They recognized. Snap. That's Jesus. Obviously, he disappeared from the MS. Amen. Amen. It's available for us. Amen. Uh, and then I have answer to what you asked last week. Uh, you said uh, something that has really helped me from the first time that you came. And uh, the one word that I had it since I had it was when you took us from Isaiah 55, verse 11. And you spoke about uh, for his red shall not return unto him void. And then you spoke about Jesus being the source of revelation of God's word. And he came and he accomplished that which God had sent him to do. And then we jumped again into John 1. So I'm really thankful for that. It's still one of my favorite teachings by you. Thank you so much. All right, God bless you. Let's just lift our hands and thank God. Amen. I just speak life to every part of you being in the name of Jesus. I speak life to you in Jesus' name. I speak life to you, more life to you, more life to you. Just, just look at someone, hold your hands and tell them and speak life to them. Just hold someone's hand and say, speak. And listen, 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 do it with boldness. There is someone living on the inside of you. Okay? And he's called, he's called what? God, Yahweh. Amen. Speak life. Do it boldly. Amen. If you know their name, you can mention their name. Listen, listen. Guys, listen. I'm not... I, I, I didn't say pray. I said speak life. <laughs> Amen. Speak as a person of authority. Okay. See, sometimes you are waiting for God. Then God says, waiting on you. I'm giving the authority. Amen. You go cast out demons. You heal the sick. You raise the dead. Amen. So now I want you to you to speak life. You look at the person and say, I speak life into you. Jesus. Yeah, don't, don't repeat after me. Say what you want to say. <laughs> I speak life in Jesus' name. More life to you. Life, life, life. Life, life, life. You have no idea, hey. You have no idea what you're depositing on the inside of the person. I speak life to you in Jesus' name. 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 Amen. I speak life to you. Oh, life to you. Jesus name. Speak life to one another person. I receive life in Jesus name. I speak life in Jesus name. I speak life in Jesus name. Life to you. More life to you. More life to you in Jesus name. I speak life to you in Jesus name. Life to you. More life to you in Jesus name. Life to you in Jesus name. Keith. Life to you in Jesus name. Yes, sir.